So several years ago, I did a, a video, and we're going to link to that video down, down below here too, on contractual risk transfers or the proper use of additional insured forms. It's just one, one of the many things that have to be done right. Um, here is a free download on our website. Um, I would go ahead and take advantage of this. It's free. We're not going to mess with you. You're just going to get this downloaded in a Word document. It is 12 pages long. I was just looking over here because I'm going to talk about it in just a second. What blows me away, and I'm, I'm at my home office still because of this virus thing, so I was just, just kind of telling you this. What blows me away is, is num number one, is I can't tell you how many uh, contracts that I look at, and there's, there's two things. Is Number one, if you're signing a contract, it's not just about the work you're going to do, right? If you sign a, a contract, there is an insurance and hold harmless agreement in that contract. And if, you're, if you don't have one or don't know what they are, we have a sample that we're happy to give you. We suggest that you take that and have your attorney make that part of your contract. Because in this insurance and hold harmless agreement, it talks about the right limits of insurance, the right kinds of insurance. And here's one of the things that blows me away, because I'm looking at contract, or I'm sorry, additional insured request from some very sophisticated, I'm gonna call them like counties or cities, large and small developers that and people that, that should that should understand this and they simply ask to be named as an additional insured now there are a bunch of additional insured form numbers like the cg 2010 1185 version is kind of the gold standard you can't get that very often um, anymore but you can get the equivalent which would be a cg 2010 1114 combined with a CG 2037. You need both of them. You got to have both of them to get what you want. And you got to have the right year, the right version year to get what you want. If you just ask to be named as an additional insured, or you're being asked to name somebody as an additional insured, that's not a very good trigger. That's not a very, and a trigger to me means what's going to draw coverage, what's going to get my insurance company involved and help me out. By the way, if I'm a subcontractor and something goes wrong, I want my insurance company to help me out. And if I'm a general contractor and my subcontractor did something wrong, I want their insurance to come and help us out. I don't want I don't want to go after my friends usually or somebody that I've gotten to know professionally or personally. I want their insurance companies to help us out. That's all we want to do. If something goes wrong, we want to know who's going to be responsible. So when you sign a contract and you say you're going to do all this work and it should have an indemnity and a hold harmless agreement in there, and that simply says um, in California specifically, it's a type two indemnity in both commercial and in residential. A type one indemnity says you're absolutely responsible. And that's been around. I've been doing this over 40 years. That's that's a real deal. It doesn't matter whose fault it is, you're responsible. So I've, I've had some bizarre claims where someone that is responsible for hurting somebody else to work for somebody else, it gets flipped back by an indemnity and a hold harmless agreement type one. A type two is the one you want. And that's it's the fairest one. It says you're responsible for what you did as a percentage, right? So we wanna talk about that. We wanna get the form numbers right. And I want you as a contractor to understand when you sign one of these contracts and it has an insurance, a hold harmless and indemnity agreement in there, you're, 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 you're part of it. So this is part of the download. This one here is part of the download we were just talking about. This is page seven of the download. The indemnity provisions, additional insured provisions and waiver of subrogation. Again, all part of the agreement. So if you're going to be a contractor, which means you're going to work by contract, right? Subcontractor, developer, or general contractor. These things are very important to get the right form numbers. Don't just ask someone to name you as an additional insured. I know it's happening all over. I see it. And I'm just, every time I see it, I'm like, someone took a class and didn't pay attention when they got the form numbers because form numbers matter. It, it matters so much. And by the way, it, these things have to be required by a written contract. Every additional insured status says, page one, I mean, line one, as required by a written contract, we will, and then it goes on and gives you what you're looking for, as required by a written contract. So the other thing is, is when you don't give a form number, we're, we're already in trouble. If someone issues a certificate of insurance with an additional insured on it, but it's not required by it, a written contract, because it's going to say as required by written contract, guess what's going to happen? It's, it's not going to attach the way you want it to. You're going to, you know, it's not that you're not insured. I don't want to make that claim. I'm just going to say 
you, you really chose the hard route. So anyway, take a second and just download this guide right here. It'll get you started. That doesn't include our indemnity and hold harmless over here that we can give you a sample of. You just ask us for that. And, and, and here's our deal. And my promise to you is look, we, we're trying to become the most valuable risk manager and insurance broker you know. That, that's it. So when it becomes apparent to you that we are that valuable to you, just ask us. And, and we won't bug you. We're not pressuring you. We've got so many people that want to do business with us. We're, we're doing okay. I'm not, I'm not overstating that. We're just doing okay. But these are free tools and free services that you can get right off of our website. And you don't see this little thing, we're not asking for a phone number even. We're just saying, hey, give us that. And guess what we're gonna do? We're just gonna give you some information every time we blog something that pertains to what you're asked for. We're gonna send you a link and say, here, hey, you might wanna take a look at the blog. And guess what our blogs have? You've guessed it. We have a blog on this that has a link directly to this, this contractual transfer guide. And, and, and why not take advantage of it? Why not just take it and, and make sure that you do it? And by the way, these come in Word. We're not giving you stuff in PDF or something. Although you can manipulate PDF, it's a little harder. These are Word documents. So your attorneys can take these things and manipulate them and make them mean something to you guys. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Just take advantage of the link and get this right here and you'll get this. And if you'd like, just email us back and we'd be happy to give you this. This is, it's not, and by the way, this is the standard. This indemnity and hold harmless agreement should be on absolutely every contract. And the one we're gonna give you is gonna name names. We're gonna have to say, just name me as an additional insured. Like I said, we're gonna give you the form numbers that need to be there. And that's key. And I, I, I can't tell you, I've just in the last two weeks, I'm sitting here in this virus deal and I have to read contracts. And I'm reading contracts, so I gotta read the insurance, indemnity and hold harmless provisions because those are the indemnity and hold harmless are the triggers that trigger the insurance. So I read all this from some, some good sized counties, some good sized cities, some sophisticated builders. And I'm like, why don't you ask it for the right, why don't you just name the form number? It's saying name me as an additional insured. Wow, that's asking for, for nothing. Basically, might as well ask for nothing because you, there's so many additional insured forms, it doesn't give you the ones you want. Here, this one, this page right here, this one, this separate deal that we can send you, right here has it, it's just two pages. Have your attorney add that to your deal, take out yours and put that in with your attorney's permission. Make sure it's right, make sure it's good for you. And if you're signing one, anything less than what we're sharing with you right here, um, it's not good for anybody. See, see, the thing is with the hold harmless and indemnity agreement tied to your insurance requirements like this, naming the right indemnification, remember what was our first goal is to remain friends. So the way we remain friends is we say, okay, something goes wrong, who's paying for it? Well, let's get the insurance companies to pay for it. Do it right, do it right. And by the way, insurance companies want you to do it right because you know how much money it costs to figure out what should have happened going to court and such, they don't want to pay all that money. Come on, anyway. Free, no kidding, free. We got other reports on our page. I hope that we get to help you. Thank you so much.